this might be one of the most funniest clips, but also very um, revealing in that if you ever considered, or if you ever wondered, like myself, why doesn't Joe have a lot more comedians who like, I don't know, have a difference of opinion, maybe disagree with him on certain topics, maybe challenge him on certain things. This, I think, is a reason why, especially when it comes to Brendan Shaw, because there's loads of compilations out there of Brendan agreeing with everything Brent, uh, Joe Rogan says, sorry. If Joe Rogan, if he has an opposing opinion and Joe Rogan has opposed it right after, he just agree with him, changes his mind, and he kind of sounds like a bit of a parrot, and it kind of makes him look really bad. To fucking kill the shit out of people. Oh, tons. A chip on your shoulder and a thick skin. There's the biggest chip on your shoulder. And you also see the drawbacks. You see a huge drop. It is tough to deal with, but if it's, it's the anybody, toughest to deal with. Got a, a dicey past in terms of the law. Some and, would say the diciest. Uh, a rough reason for why the know. roughest oh who knows it's fun it's so it's the funnest yeah it is fun it's the best you feel like this is a dirty business like i don't want to be a part of your dirty it's the business. dirtiest business there, oh god this is a disaster it's such a it's the biggest disaster but i now understand why he does this because when he does stand up to rogan or when he does have a difference of opinion this is how rogan reacts to him amazing <laughs> Bro, here's the thing. He's going to be better in his next fight now. Because now yeah. he knows what he did to Izzy. He's yeah. going to be better. So is Izzy. <laughs> did you see that? They're talking after the fight from Iz between Israel Adesanya and Sean Strickland, which Sean Strickland won. And Joe Rogan makes a point to say, even if they do have a rematch, Sean Strickland's going to be better. And obviously him knowing that he's won, he's going to have a different type of confidence coming in. And Brendan says, yeah, but so is Izzy. He's also going to be better because he's lost a fight. He's not going to know what he did wrong and what he can kind of do right or what he can kind of correct, sorry, in the second fight when it happens. And Rogan glared at him as if he said the most redacted or insane thing ever. He gave him the shut the fuck up, you absolute peon look. It's absolutely crazy how he glared at him considering what Brendan said was pretty, you know, was pretty normal. Didn't really sound too crazy to me. He said way more redacted things over the years. So is Izzy. <laughs> Let's go again. Let's zoom in more on fucking Joe Rogan's face when he says it though. The whole entire time. Let's just look at Rogan's face the whole entire time, right from the beginning. Look at Rogan's face. Just look at him. Look at Amazing. Him. Bro, here's the thing. He's going to be better in his next fight now. Because now yeah. he knows what he did to Izzy, he's yeah. going to be better. So is Izzy. Your whole life, how you're living your life matters way more than any fucking time where you guys. <laughs> and look at Brian's face, the fucking weasel. Brian's meant to be his friend, meant to be his boy. Instead of standing up for him and saying something and breaking the tension, he just laughs and kind of, he can't contain his laughter. He's, he's trying to massage his face to stop laughing. But he just lets his friend get glared at, which shows that this happens quite often. Even behind the scenes, this happens. This happens quite often. They probably, they probably each get the glare. They probably all got the glare from Rogan at one point in time, which has put them in their place. So if you ever, if you ever wondered why doesn't Brandon have a difference of opinion to Rogan? Why does he always change his mind whenever Rogan says something? Why is he always agreeing and nodding away like a fucking nodding dog in a car? Why is he always a bit of a parrot when he gets in front of Rogan? Why is he always trying to suck up to him? That's why because Joe doesn't actually like it when people disagree with him it's weird because that's why i kind of liked joe to begin with right when joe kind of like rose to prominence part of the reason why he was fun to listen to because he had all these interesting friends had all these different different opinions then you get all these experts on and they usually disagree and they go back and forth and you would sometimes listen to it as like a fly on the wall and you would have a difference of opinion for maybe what they the two people said so you, it, it was kind of like this weird freeway conversation that was going on in your head because you're listening to them you're formulating your own your own fucking opinions you're arguing back to what they were saying bloody blah, blah 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 nowadays rogan just gets people on who are in his own echo chamber who believe the same things that he believes so now the podcasters aren't even that interesting to be in, to be honest which is why they've kind of lulled in quality over time he still gets good guests but the opinions of the people they inevitably always align to him or because of his celebrity and his notoriety people don't want to go on those shows and really challenge him for the most part it's really strange but if you have but especially when it comes to brendan this explains so much and i have a lot more sympathy for the guy now because this must be so uncomfortable to happen in real. It's, it's probably it's weird enough when it happens in private, when it's happening in front of thousands of people, it's probably so uncomfortable. Like let's watch Brendan throughout the entire thing. 
right? Let's watch his face because you can tell he feels awkward and he kind of feels a little bit, you know, like he said a bad thing and daddy might be angry and hit him with a shoe. Watch Brendan's face the entire time. And look at Sam. <laughs> Sam allegedly only does um, multivitamins. That's the face of someone that does multivitamins. Just that's a, that's allegedly just multivitamins, B12, vitamin Ds, magnesium tablets, allegedly. That's what he's saying. That's what he tells us. It's only magnesium tablets. He's allegedly been sober for like, what, five years or something? I think, did he celebrate his sobriety or something like that? His sobriety is like, um, is like uh, Bert Kreischer saying he's on, he's on a diet or he's working out. You know, what, who, do you believe it? I don't know, whatever. Anyway, let's continue. Just watch Brendan's face. Amazing. Bro, here's the thing. He's going to be better in his next fight now. Because now yeah. he knows what he did to Izzy. He's yeah. going to be better. So is Izzy. <laughs> oh, that's so bad for Brendan. Look at his face. He tries to smile, play it off. He sees Joe's not smiling back. <laughs> One more time, one more time, please. One more time, one more time. So is Izzy, and it absolutely killed Rogan. Rogan wanted to kill him. He wanted to jump over that fucking table and get him in a fucking anaconda choke or something. No, because now yeah. he knows what he did to Izzy. He's yeah. gonna be better. So is Izzy. Your whole life, how you're living your life matters way more than any fucking title you guys. <laughs> Rogan is such a fucking asshole, man. To your own friends. Come on, man. Don't do that to them on, you know, live on stream like that. And it was so unnecessary as well. Like I said, Brendan says a lot of dumb shit, right? That wasn't so dumb of a thing to say. And he just <laughs> glared at him. Like, how dare you speak when I'm speaking? How dare you have a difference of opinion? It's like, fuck, bro. Like, relax. But again, it goes to show, if you ever wondered, why do all these comedians suck up to Rogan so much? Why does he have this weird ego? That's why. It's not natural for grown men with children, middle-aged white men, essentially, to have this kind of relationship with somebody who they think is their friend, but they also treat like a deity. They also treat like royalty. They also treat like their father. Like, that's the icky part. Like, some of these guys that like, treat Rogan like he's their fucking dad. It's fucking weird. So it's not surprising that Rogan has this weird, you know, ego and character about him because he's constantly being fellatioed, you know, by all these grown men who are wanting to perform at his club, get on his podcast, because they know he can change their lives. <laughs> and he lords that power over them, you know what I mean? You said something wrong? He, he made Luis J. Gomez, you know, become friends with Brendan. That's how, that's the power of Rogan. He said, look, you're not coming on my show again if you keep insulting my boy Brendan. Even though I insult him, I say funny stuff about him, you're not coming on my show until you make good with him. The moment he made good with him, he invited him to Skankfest, Look at the coincidence. Suddenly, Luis J. Gomez is back on the JRE after five years, five years of not being on there and seeing his friend Big J. Ogerson go on there, Dave Smith go on there. Um, Anita, sorry, Anit Rosenberg says, Brendan's tone and quickness with his comment was that of a clapback, which in Rogan's eyes was unwarranted and out of the blue. That's my read anyway. Okay, cool. You thought, okay, so you thought Rogan saw that as an... Hmm. Maybe, but I think Brendan's face kind of showed it wasn't a clapback. He was like, you know, it's going to be a hard fight, the rematch, because now Izzy knows like how good Sean Strickland is. He's not going to take it for granted. So that's what he basically tried to say. I didn't see it as a clapback, but I see what you mean. Um, Atua says, in the old days, they never talked about fights at all either, but they were not so sellouts and actually friends. And were... Yes, exactly, your tier. Good point. The old fight companions were really fun because they wouldn't even spend the time talking about the fights. They'd be talking about other shit, but they'd be loose about it because they'd be a bit drunk, they'd be a bit tipsy, they'd be just jolly, a bit high maybe, and they'd be happy to see each other. There'd be genuine excitement. I remember when there'd be episodes where Brian obviously would come late and he'd come late with the cheese or with the wines and they'd be like, yay, Brian's here. Like genuinely happy to have him here. Like, okay, he's here now. The vibes are going to increase. It's going to be extra funnies. Now it feels like, yeah, I, mean, I don't care what these guys say because I think a lot of these guys, they get upset that us as fans and viewers, that we can kind of read them. Because I think it's kind of easy, even with me on my small level. I'm sure most of you guys reading, watching this stream all, the, all this time, 140 episodes plus, you kind of know, you know, a bit about me, even if, if I don't say some stuff, right? The way I act, the way I say certain things, you can kind of tell. 
So I think a lot of people that watch these types of content, if you consume these guys' content, you watch them on the JRE, you watch their own content, you follow them on Instagram and shit, it's quite easy to like read into the stuff that they're doing. So I think they don't like it. So when sometimes we read into it and we say, oh, these guys aren't friends as they used to be, da, 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 they try and overcompensate to prove us wrong. But when they do, it kind of proves us right. Because we, you know, we, we all got eyes. You can tell the difference in vibe between Save Our Parks and when he gets these guys in Fight Companion. You can tell. The Save Our Park guys, Ari, Mark, Shane, J Joe's clearly more closer to them and he has more fun with them like he did before with Brian Callan, with Brendan and with Eddie. You can tell it's not the same. It definitely isn't the same. And maybe it's to do with the rape allegations. Maybe it's to do with Brendan and the whole Bobby Lee thing. Maybe it's to do with Brendan doing the whole, I know, bald guys who are slanging dick comment. I don't know. But something has definitely changed. It's not the same anymore, man. It's definitely, it definitely feels like they're pulling teeth. It definitely feels like Joe's doing them a favor. It doesn't feel like he's really that happy to see them. He just does it because he's their friends. He doesn't want to be, I don't know. It feels strange to kind of, it doesn't feel right, to be honest. If you watched them before, it doesn't feel right. 